this is a video for the randomness lab and I'm going to walk you through how to do this spreadsheet. In the future I will probably not give you as detailed instructions on how to do the labs and we'll expect you to do some of the construction yourself. Um, but for this lab I'm really going to walk you through and you can just follow step by step what I do. Hopefully this will help you get the hang of Microsoft Excel or whatever spreadsheet software that you're using. Now there's three things I want to do in this lab. And the first thing I want to do is I want to take each of these um, samples. I have three samples here. Each of them has a, uh, each of them is in a row and it has a hundred H's and T's. I want to take each sample and I want to count the H's. And I'll just write that down here just for reference. It's not going to be functional at all. And the second thing I want to do is count the switches. And what I mean by that is in in a sample, say this top one, notice those first two characters are different. The second, two, the second pair of characters are different. The third pair are the same though. I want to count how many of the consecutive pairs of characters are the same. Okay. If the sequence is truly random, then that should be around half of 99, which is 49.5, since there are 99 pairs. Okay, so that's going to be a test to see um, if this sequence really seems to be random. And then this third test will be, is there a run of five consecutive characters in the sequence? Now, I have three rows, and each of them has a hundred H's and T's in it. And um, if I go over to the right, I'll see that, let's see, how far does it go? It goes to column CV. So A through CV gives you a hundred columns. And one way to determine that, now I'm going to press Control Home to go back to the upper left hand corner of my spreadsheet. One way to determine how many, um, how many columns you have is in a selection is to select it. So I'm going to hold down Shift and go to the right. And you'll notice uh, in the um, bottom right hand corner of my selection, before I went over to the scroll bar, it was in the upper left. Uh, to, the, to actually above and to the left of my selection. It's counting how many rows I have in my collection and how many columns. Once I go to uh, um, go so that I have to scroll and it's beyond the realm of one screen, it tells me in the bottom right corner. And if I go all the way to the end, I see sure enough that's a hundred columns. Okay, I'm going to have to press Control Home again to see where I'm at. You don't have to do that. I'm just showing you how to count how many columns you have. The first thing I'm going to do is clean things up a little bit by changing these column widths um, so that they fit the contents inside. And to do that, I'm first going to click on the A that highlights the column, and then I'm going to press Shift, Control, hold those down while I press the right arrow. And what that does is it takes me all the way to the right side of my spreadsheet. Now I have all my columns highlighted. I'm going to go to Format and auto fit column width. What that does is it makes the column just wide enough so that it um, so that it displays what's in the what's in the cells but doesn't give you extra space. And column G is really ugly because I typed the three objectives so I'm going to delete those now. And I might have to auto fit that column again. Okay, so I've got uh, um, I've got three rows here. Each row has a hundred H's and T's, and the first thing I want to do is count how many H's are in each row. Now, of course, you could, could go through and count by hand, um, but I do not recommend that, and you're going to need to learn how to use Microsoft Excel functions, if not for this lab, then definitely for later labs when we're dealing with sample sizes of a thousand and uh, ten thousand, maybe even. And no, you won't be asked to generate those by hand. You'll have the computer generate them. Okay, I'm going to right click on that co on column A and press insert, right click, insert, right click, insert. And what that's doing is giving me three columns to the left of the start of my sequences to work with. Now you'll notice if I press shift control, right arrow, it takes me to the right corner of my spreadsheet, I now go to CV. So I'm at column D through CV and that will be important. I'm going to press control home to go back to the upper left corner of my spreadsheet. Okay, so first thing I want to do is count how many H's I have. And to do this, I'm going to use a count if statement. So I'll type equals count, and here it gives me all the different function, 
functions that Microsoft Excel recognizes that start with count, and I want to do count if. Okay. And it tells me what count if does. It counts the number of cells within a range that meet the given, given condition. So my range is going to be this, this row, this 100 H's and T's, and the condition is going to be, do I have an H? Okay, so I'm going to put left parenthesis so that I tell it um, what my range and condition are. The first is the range. Now I'm going from cell D1 to um, CY1, so I'm going to type D1, and the way I tell it to go all the way to CY1, include everything in between, is I put a colon between those. So I have D1 colon CY1. You can just select it with your mouse, but I find that typing on the keyboard to be a lot faster. And then now that I'm done with my range, notice that I have a comma here, and the next thing will be criteria. So I'm going to type comma. And then the criteria is I want to check if the cell contains H. Now since that's a text value and not a numerical value, I'm going to need to put it in parentheses. Okay, I'm going to close off that parentheses, and there's my function that counts the number of H's in that row. And we see that there's 39 H's in the first row. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill these two cells down to the next three rows. And the way I do that, do that is I highlight the six cells, and I'm going to press Control D. And what that does is it takes the cells up at the top, and it copies the contents of those cells down. Except for it makes one change, and here's the change. In the first row, I had a formula that referred to D1 through CY1. When that row got when that cell got copied down, it now refers to D2 through CY2. It recognizes that since I'm in a new row, I probably want to do my calculations in a new row. And then the third one is D3 through CY3. So that we see that the first um, sample of 100 H's and T's have, had 100 H's and therefore it have 61 T's. The second sample had 50 H's and 50 T's. And the third sample had 49 H's and 51 T's. So the next thing we're going to do is in each of these rows, we're going to count how many times the character switches. Now there are 95, 99 pairs of characters here. And it should be about half of those switch, okay, because there's a 50% chance that a character, uh, a pair of characters will be the same and a 50% chance that they'll be different. Now to count it, I'm going to need to put, um, put some characters below each sample. So to do that, I'm going to um, click on the two, right click, and press insert. That'll insert a row between those first two samples and then do the same thing at the four. And I'm going to use a six row as well. Okay, so we're going to count how many switches there are. Now to do this, um, it would be pretty difficult to just write one statement to count how many switches there are. So instead, what I'm going to do is make a new row of characters, and these characters are going to be zero if the cell above and the cell above and to the left do not match as these two pairs do, and it'll be one if those two cells do match, as these cells do. That would be a one, that would be a zero, that would be a zero, etc. And of course I'm not going to do this by hand for all, um, let's see, 297 cells. For you it would be 990 because you're dealing with 10 rows of data. What I'm going to do instead is do an if statement. So this will be equals any time that you're entering a formula into Excel, when you want it to calculate something, you use an equal sign first. And then I have if, and again, it tells me what this if statement does. It checks whether a condition is met and returns one value of true, another value of is false. So the condition that I want to see, it, see whether or not it's met is whether or not these two cells are the same. Okay, but that's pretty simple. This cell is E1, so E1, and then equals D1. That's the logical test. That's the um, that's what I'm wanting to test to see if that is true. Are these two cells equal? Okay, I'm done with that logical test. So I'm going to enter in my comma, and now I, I give it the value that I want it to return if it's true. If those two are really equal, if that expression is true, then I want it to give me a one. And that's my value of true, so I'll hit comma, and then I tell it my value of false. I want it to give it a zero if they're not the same. In the parentheses, press enter, and notice that didn't change anything. It still returned to zero, uh, but the power of doing doing it this way, using an Excel formula, is I can copy 
this all the way to the right. So I'm going to go over to the end of my spreadsheet. Press Control R. And that gives me a row of 99 ones and zeros. And notice that a zero shows up when these two characters don't match. And a one shows up when they do match. And what copy and write, or excuse me, it should be fill write. What filling write did was it took the contents of cell E2 and it, it copied that to the rest of these cells, except notice it changed the column. We copied over to column F, so it realized, oh, you probably want to compare F1 to E1, and indeed it's correct. Okay, so I've got ones if the, um, if the characters are made the same, and zeros if they switched, and I want to count how many zeros I have. So just as above, I'll use a count if statement. My range is from E2. Actually, let me do it differently this time, just to show you a different way to select your range. I can select, uh, click on the cell that I want to start at, and then I'm going to do Shift, go to the right, and actually I'm going to do Control R to go all the way to the right, and that gives me my range. Okay, I'm entering in my range. It gave me my range up there. Okay, so there's my range. And comma, what's the criteria? I want the cell value to be zero. Since that's a number, I don't have to put it in quotes. Okay, so this will count how many switches I have. And it turns out in this sequence of 100 H's and T's, the H's and T's switch 55 times. Now, to get that to the other rows, I'm going to hold down Shift, Control, hit the right arrow key three times. That gets the whole row for me. Press Control C to copy. And now I'm going to press Control Home. Go down to cell A4 and press Control V to paste. And what that did is it took the contents of row 2 and it pasted them to row 4. Except, again, as when we filled right and filled down, it changed the row references for us. Up here, we were referring to row 2 columns E through CY, so when we copied that to row 4, it refers to row 4, columns E through CY, as do these if statements. Okay. Well, I guess they refer to column 3, but it still did the appropriate change in the rows. Excuse me, row 3. Okay, now I'm also going to do that for row 6, and I see that the first sample of 100 H's and T's had 55 out of the 99 pairs of consecutive H's and T's switch, and the second sample had 70 out of a 99. So that means 70 of the pairs switched and 29 did not, and then the third sample had 58 of the 99 pairs switch, and the other ones did not. Okay, and we, we said in the reading that if these switches are between, let's see, 40 and 59, then there's a pretty good chance that this was really randomly generated. If it's outside of that range, if it's 39 or less, or 60 or more, then it was probably not um, really randomly generated, and probably a human tried to come up with a sequence. So our second sequence is subject, and that ends up being correct. This second sequence, even though it had 50 H's and 50 T's, is the one that somebody just made up by hand. Notice that they tend to alternate H's and T's a lot more than the other sequences, which is shown in this count of the switches. Okay, and the last thing we're going to do is check and see if whether there's a run of 5 or not. And again, um, you could go through and do this by hand, but instead I'm going to enter in Excel formulas to do the checking for us of whether there's a run of 5 or not. So I'm going to need to put a new row for each sample. I'm going to click on 3, right click, and select Insert. I'm going to click on the 6, right click, and select Insert. And again, I'm going to have to work with my data over here and then put my information there. I'll just remind you what we're doing. Um, we're checking for a run of 5. I guess it probably would have been quicker to copy this, but I'll just type it three times. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a number in this row that shows me how long the current run is. So I'm going to always start off at 1. 
because when I start off with a t, that's a run of length 1. And then the next value I want to be 1 again because this is only 1 h in a row. And then this value I'll want to be 1 as well because that's the first t in a row. But then the next one will be second because that's the second t in a row. And then the next value I'll want to be 3 because that's the third t in a row. And then once I have all these numbers filled in, I can just check to see if there's a number that's 5 or larger. Okay, so what I'm going to do again is not go through and enter these by hand. That would be quite tedious, especially for your 10 rows um, of 100 H's and T's. What I'm going to do instead, I'm going to leave that one alone. And I'm going to, so in other words, I'm going to enter that first one by hand. Because for the first one, I'm really starting off with a word of one. For every one thereafter, I look to the previous one and see if that's the same. If it is the same as it is here, then I'll add 1 to the run count. If it's not, I'll reset the run count to 1. And I'll do that with an if statement. So we'll do equals if. Okay, we've used this before. And remember that it checks a condition. If it's met, it returns one value. If it's not met, it returns another value. I'm going to put a left parenthesis. And now I need to tell it what condition I'm testing. And again, I'm testing whether these two are the same. Now there's two different ways I could do this. I could test whether E1 equals D1, or I could test whether um, E2 equals 1. Those are equivalent because because of how I set up that second row. And to be more direct, I'll do D1 equals D1. Okay, so I'm testing whether these two are the same. If they are the same, if that logical test is true, then I want to add 1 to the run count, and the run count was in the previous cell. So I want this cell to be cell D3 plus 1. I want to add 1 to that run count if, um, if my character is indeed the same as it previously was. And if it's not the same, that's the value if my logical test is false. But what I want to do, I want to reset the count of 1. Okay. Okay, so I do that. It returns a 1, as I expect, because the H is different than a T, so that's at a run count of 1. And now I'm going to fill this right. So I'll hold down Shift. Go all the way over here. Press Control r and now it does the run count for me. So, for example, right here I see it's a 3 because there's three tails in a row. It was a 2 before that because that was the second consecutive tail, or T value. Um, and then there's a 1. There's a 1 because we changed from H to T. And that H had previously changed from a T. And we see that actually there is a run of 5 here. But I'm going to show you how to, how to tell Excel whether to check that or not. And what we're going to do is we're going to equals another if statement. Now the run of 5 isn't like the H's and switches where we were counting. Here we just want to return yes or no. There is a run of 5 or there is not a run of, run of 5. And what I want to test is the maximum run count here. No, oh, actually I already had, I had another run of 5. I had a couple of runs of 5 in this first sequence. So I look at these run counts. That is range D through CY3. Okay. And I want to take the max of that range. Yeah, I used the arrow keys and it didn't like it. So I'm going to enter max of that range. So max of parentheses D3 to CY3. Okay, that will return a number. Okay. Now, uh, when that number comes, I want to know is that number bigger than 4? Okay, there is a way to write bigger than or equal to 5. I think it's greater than or equal to 5. I'm not sure about that. I rarely use it. I instead am a little bit lazy and I say, well, if we're bigger than or equal to 5 and we're an integer, that must mean we're bigger than 4. So I'm going to use bigger than 4. And then I'm going to do a comma. What do I want to say if this is true? Well, if this is true, that means I have a run of, uh, of length at least 5. So I just want to return yes. And I need to put that in quotes because it's not a numerical value. If that is false, then that means my maximum run length is no bigger than 4, I want to return a value of no. So I'll put that in quotes, in the parentheses, press enter, and sure enough it returns yes, as it should. Now I'm going to align this to the right to make it a little bit prettier, line up with everything else. 
Okay, so I had Excel determine whether or not there was a run of length 5 in this sequence. Now to do this for the other sequences, um, I guess I already had the run of 5 there, so I will just press Shift, Control, right arrow, right arrow. That takes me all the way to the right side of my spreadsheet. Press Control C. Now I'm going to press Control Home and go down to cell B6, press Control V to paste um, all those formulas, and this time it was no. In the second, sequences of H, second sequence of H's and T's, it turns out there was not a run of at length 5. It must be that the longest one is 4, because I see a 4 here. There are 4 tails in a row. And that tends to be the case. When a human generates a sequence, they usually will not put 5 heads or 5 tails in a row, because that doesn't feel random to us. And then I want to paste it again to cell B9, and we find that again there was a run of length 5. So it turns out that the, the first and the third sequences were randomly generated via coin flips, and the second one somebody, a student of mine just came up with in their head. And we see that it violated both the tests. And in your lab, I want you to declare a sequence to be real if... Um, the switches is between 40 and 59, inclusively, and there is a run of 5. And I want you to declare a sequence to be fake if either there's 60 or more switches, or 39 or less switches, or if there's not a run of length 5. Okay, so this one would also be real because it satisfies both of those properties. The switches is between 40 and 59, and there is a run of 5. Now you'll probably find that a few are incorrect, and that just happens by chance. It could be that a sequence that somebody generated off the top of their head could be diagnosed as real via these two criteria, or it could be that a truly random sequence gets diagnosed as a fake one. Um, but I bet you'll find that most of your diagnoses here via these two criteria end up being correct. This is a really interesting exercise, and one that I encourage you to do with your class. Now since you're only doing five um, fake, fakely, not randomly generated, just off somebody's top of their head, sequences, um, that's a fairly small sample size. You might end up finding several people that are good at generating random sequences, and also since you're just doing five random sequences, you might find that a couple of those really do end up being diagnosed as fake. What I'll do is, once everybody's submitted this collab, I'll send out a um, summary of how many of how many of the real sequences were indeed diagnosed as real and how many were diagnosed as fake. Um, how many, same for the fake sequences. Okay, last thing I want to do here is show you how to generate a random sequence of H's and T's because you're asked to do five of those. You're asked for five of your sequences to be generated by somebody off the top of their head and it should not be somebody from the class and then five to be truly randomly generated. You can flip a coin if you'd like but that'd be 500 coin flips and it turns out the coin flips aren't really that time consuming. The time consuming part is recording it and then getting it into an sp uh, Excel spreadsheet. But we have a quicker way of doing that, and the way that I'm going to do this is I'm first going to generate a hundred zeros and ones, and then I'm going to turn those zeros and ones into H's and T's. Okay, so I'm in cell, let's see, D12, and in D12 I'm going to type equals rand between, and this is an Excel function that returns a random number between the two numbers that you specify. Since I want a random 0 or 1, I just want a random number between 0 and 1. Okay, so that returns 0 for this case. And now I'm going to fill that right so that there are 100 of these. So I go over to column CY, press Control R, and then I'll press the left arrow key to get me back where I started. And I've got a bunch of zeros and 1s. And now I'm going to change those zeros and 1s into H's and T's. Now, each one of these was a random number between 0 and 1, and notice right here we already have a run of 6 zeros. So there really are a lot of runs in a truly random sequence. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change, let's see, zeros will turn into H's and 1's and T's. So I'll have equals an if statement, and I'm going to test D12. If D12 is a 0, let's see, I think I said turn that into an H, I'm not sure, but I will. Uh, if D12 is 0, then that logical test is true, so I want this cell to say H, otherwise I want it to say T. So that'll turn zeros into 
H's and 1's into T's, and we see that since this got recalculated and it became a 1, that turns into a T. Uh, it's a good time to note, anytime you have a random uh, output like this, it recalculates, it re regenerates a random number every time that you do something in Excel. So you'll notice that that changed, and it'll continue to change as we make further modifications to our spreadsheet. Okay, I'm going to fill this all the way to the right. So that I get 100 H's and T's, and again, things are going to change, all these zeros and ones. Press Control R, fill right, and then I'll press the left arrow key. Okay. And now, that generated for me 100 H's and T's. And I used Excel's random uh, ran between function to get those. Now, I just don't want one set, I want five sets. So to get five sets of H's and T's, what I'm going to do is select these two rows, select columns our cells D11 through CY12. It's the 100 H's and T's along with their zeros and ones. Press Control C, that copies everything in my selection. Press the left arrow key, that takes me back to the top left corner of my selection. And then I'm going to go down and paste it just below um, in cell D13. So I'll press Control V. And I'm going to go down and paste it again, and I'm going to keep pasting until I have five of them. And notice it keeps recalculating every single time. Okay, so now we have 100 H's and T's. Now, we don't want these zeros and ones here. Instead, we, want, uh, we just want the H's and T's. Now, I can't go deleting these zeros and ones, because let me show you what happens if I delete it. Um, notice all these turn into H's. That's no longer a random sequence of H's and T's. So I'm going to press Control Z to undo what I just did there. So instead of deleting, what I need to do first is to fix these H's and these T's. Okay. So uh, the problem here is every time I do something, it's recalculating the H's and T's because it's recalculating the zeros and ones. I'm going to make it stop recalculating. And the way I'm going to do that is select all these H's and T's and zeros and ones. I went all the way down and then press control right arrow key. I could have pressed control down and control right arrow key all while holding the shift key. Okay, so I've got my selection here. I'm going to copy the whole thing, all the zeros and ones, all the H's and T's that we've randomly generated by pressing control C. I'm going to press the left arrow key. It takes me up to the left-hand corner. And now I'm going to paste that right on top of itself, except I don't want it to paste these formulas. I don't want it to do ran between. I don't want it to do the if statement. I just want to paste the H's and the T's and the zeros and the ones. To do that, I go to paste special, paste special and then select values. Okay, I'll press OK. And it doesn't look like much has changed, but actually a lot has changed. If I go off and change something in Microsoft Excel, if I change that to a zero, then these values don't change anymore. And that's because I've just pasted them as values, not as zeros and ones. Okay, so to clean this up, we'll want to get rid of the zeros and ones. And to do that, I'll just, there's multiple ways we could do that. Um, let's see, I will right click on the 12 and select delete. That'll delete that row. Do the same with the 13 now, and 14. 15 and the 16. Okay, now we have five uh, random sequences of 100 H's and T's, and I would want to perform all these tests on, on those sequences. So, let's see, I need to have two rows between each of these sequences, so I'll insert rows, and I'll make this just a tad faster by selecting two rows, and then I'll copy them by Control C. And then when I go down to insert on 14, I'll insert copy cells. Oh, that didn't work. I need to insert copy cells in 15, apparently, and it's, it inserts it above. Now, I don't think it'll let me... No, it doesn't let me insert. I had to copy again. Um, so if I copy two cells, I'll hit Control c go to insert. And what all I'm doing here is getting space between these different sequences so I can do the exact same thing that I was doing up here. Okay, I'm going to press Control c again to copy those two rows, insert them here. Now I'm going to take all this information, all these formulas that we wrote out, um, all these, these two tests that we did uh, as well. Let's see. 
I'll just take these two rows for now. I'll copy the H's calculation as a last step. And I'm going to copy these rows and I'm going to paste them okay, in row 12 so that I have my switches calculation and my run of, run of 5 calculation. And we see with this particular one, um, we have 50 switches and a run of 5, so a diagnosis of real is correct. With this next one, I'll press Control V. We have 53 switches, a run of 5, so that is a real sequence. And the next one, I'll press Control V at cell A18. And we have, again, 50 switches and a run of 5. And do it a couple more times. And it turns out that these five all really are diagnosed as real. If one of these had come out to 39 or less or 60 or more, then we would have needed to diagnose that one as fake. And also, if any of these would have not had a run of five, that would come out as no. And we would need to diagnose that as fake. Now, we'll also put the H's there just for information. So I'll select the H's label as well as the 39. Press Control C. I'm going to bring that down and paste it into cell A11. So I'll go to A11, press Control V, and that pace, find that I have 51 H's in the first sequence, 40 in the second. Notice even when we um, get a randomly generated sequence, we can have significantly different than 50 H's or T's. Okay, so there we've got our five, and you would have five human generated sequences up here. And please, 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 Give me a call if you're able to during normal business hours or shoot me an email. Let me know if you'd like help with a spreadsheet. I know that um, I know that Microsoft Excel, any computer software really can be confusing, where to click, what to enter where. And my, my job is to help you. So please, please do contact me if you need help. And uh, good luck on the lab.